Ugh. Jesus. Oh, dude, I got my stat of the day, too. Perfect. That was a big yawn, man. I'm awake now. That's weird. You what? never have, like, a good yawn that wakes you up? No. I don't. No? No. <laughs> Wait, Fuck you! Okay, you're yawning now. <laughs> they say that that's a thing. Like yawns are contagious. They are. Yeah, they are. I like how you guys both said that, like with such confidence. I was looking at Brandon to see if he was gonna yawn. No. No. When I yawned, he yawned. I think oh. I yawned at the same time. Yeah, I think I started yeah. it, didn't I? This guy. That's what she said. What? I don't yeah, know. I don't know how that's. Really... It was a Michael Scott one. Explain that one. That one didn't work. Yeah, it was a Michael Scott one. Sometimes you have to just say it. Sometimes you just say it just to lighten the mood. I don't even know what it means. What does it mean? You always get me satisfied. <laughs> you think you could go all day? <laughs> the best. Tim Tebow got engaged. His freaking fiance is hot as hell, too. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Damn, she's fucking hot. <laughs> I gotta see a picture now. What's, what's her name? This right here. Uh, Mrs. Tim Tebow. Wait, hold on. Hold on. She's like Mrs. Universe. Yeah, she is. Like legit, she is like a she's like Mrs. Yeah. Universe or something. <laughs> Demi Lay Nell Peters. I don't know what that means. I don't know. That's a good name though. She's twenty three. That bums me out. <laughs> How old is he? Thirty one. Well, it's good. Well, good for him, man. Yeah. Two thousand seventeen Miss Universe. He'll finally lose his virginity. Yeah, I mean. You Hopefully, I mean? like... <laughs> they have to get married first. I mean, we know how these celebrity engagements go, dude. Did you guys hear uh, Jeff Bezos is getting divorced? Yeah, and fucking Todd Gurley's trying to get her. Oh, who's my... Jeff Bezos? The Amazon guy. Fucking Amazon, like oh, the yeah, richest yeah, yeah. man in the world. Yeah, is he richest? I don't know if he is. I think he's he's, on... he's in the top ten. He's for sure in the top ten. He's worth like over a hundred something billion. Probably like America. He is, but I don't like know actual worldwide. like you can count how much dough because I think there's like. Guys out there are fucking loaded that are illegally getting money. Illegally? <laughs> yeah, dude. Say he's the richest person in the world worth an estimated $136.2 billion. Nice. Did you look at richest man or woman in the world? Person. Okay. His, his, uh, it says Bill Gates, though. You're looking at the wrong one. You're looking at the wrong one. You are. I think I think he bezos March 2018 versus so even if she got 1% of the payout of like his, his net worth it would still be the largest divorce settlement in history. He'd be so pissed too. Well, 112 that's... million? Damn. The thing that billion, like... sorry, 112 billion. This says 136 by Forbes. Dude, she's been with him longer than Amazon's been alive, I think. Maybe it was her idea. Jeff Bezos, yep. 25 years of marriage, she's 48. He's, He's it by a lot. Huh? Yeah, by a lot. Because Gates is next. It still says $112 billion, dude, on Forbes. I'm looking at 136.2. But regardless, Bill Gates is worth $90 billion. That's a shit ton. Uh, yeah. That's a huge difference. Yeah, I think Steve Ballmer, the Clippers owner, who's... And then Zuckerberg's down there at number he's five. Like, he's Ooh. like 28 or something like that billion. So this little article says that if she gets half of her husband's assets, she would be worth more than $68 billion, making her the fifth richest person in the world. That's a huge bummer. That's terrible. But it's good for... Bezos, because now he's going to be fucking loaded, and he's going to be able to just fucking do You talk thing. about sound investments. His wife made a sound investment. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know they were together. So Damn. <laughs> you know for sure that there, there's no, like, prenup or anything like that, too. So she's getting, like... I don't know, dude. There's got to be a prenup. There's got to be something. No, but this is before he was a successful person. It doesn't matter. So do you, you can do still you think, sign a prenup. Do like, you think that she makes it? Till their divorce, or does she disappear? God. Dude, that much money? You could do whatever you want. If you're... No, dude. It would just look too too bad. He's still going to be... Let's, no say, let's say it splits down the middle. He's still worth close to $70 billion. That's pretty fucking good. It's not enough. 
What if I want wings? I want wings. He can buy a lot of wings. He can buy chicken breasts without the chicken. God damn it. I'm confused. (laughs) Is that really what you want? (laughs) Are you guys ready? Let's do this. Let's start the show. Enjoy the show. Enjoy the show. Enjoy the show. What's up, everybody? Episode 31, Three Amigos and a Podcast. Yo, what's going on? Do this. Yo, yo, mas cousin, little nepotiz. <laughs> How's you guys this week, man? I just watched that movie. The School hot, of Rock. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. I thought it was uh, Hot Rod. No. Because he has that yo-yo mop poster. Oh, yeah. That's a good movie, man. Hot Rod? Yeah, it is. You never seen really it? Really underrated. You've been talking about it since we've been friends. I've never seen it. I thought it's we like were friends. You either love it or you hate that movie. Hot Rod? Isn't it Andy Samberg? Yeah. This is, I would probably yeah. like it. And uh, Danny McBride's in it. And basically all those guys from... It's like the Lonely Island This guys. is us again now starting off with a movie conversation. You I realize know. we are turning into the All Bad I know, podcast. I know. Well, I mean, we could, we, we're allowed to have lives outside of sports. We are. So speaking of, how was your lives? How did the week go? What did you guys do? I worked. That sucks. Yeah, it was fun, man. It was a good time. It was a good time. Yeah. I had, had Dean over on Sunday to watch the game. Chad, we'll get into that. Yeah. That was Chad fun. was over for the... Uh, Chad was over. Yeah. God. Little poor bastard. Yeah. yeah house that, rivalry that's got to be that tough. Uh, but we, we, were, we were good, though. Yeah. We behaved. It was, well, very respectful. Yeah. Nice. I forgot to bring your beer back, though. It's fine. I mean, for me, I pretty much was just doing a bunch of chores. It was, uh, you know, taking down Christmas lights, getting everything kind of put away. Uh, got the, the We always get the Christmas tree recycled. We don't, like, just toss it in the street like some people do. But uh, <laughs> Well, they uh, pick it up. Well, I don't know. You, if you can get it recycled, I guess they, like, do something where they, like, grind it up and they somehow use the tree grind to, for something. I don't know. But uh, what they say? that's what they say. They just <laughs> mislead us. No, but uh, yeah, doing some of that and uh, some shopping, did like some returns and everything. But uh, pretty uneventful week for me. Mostly just work and wrapping things up and nothing too uh, too exciting. Um, yeah, I, I had a packed weekend. Yeah, the, my stove wasn't working. You guys know all I had was a tiny little couch. Yeah, this weekend I went out, bought a stove. I went to the restore because I didn't want to spend that much money. You know, I'm kind of cheap or whatever. <laughs> so I went to the Habitat for Humanity restore. I saw this box in between these two ovens. I was like, oh, what's that? Pull it out, look inside. Perfect stove that I was looking for, exact size that I needed. Got it. The guy was like, I was like, there's no price on it. How much is it? He was like, oh, 60. I was like, all I have is 40 in my pocket. He goes, okay. So I just gave him two 20s and walked out. It's pretty nice. Nice. Wow. And then couch, got it from Living Spaces. Things comfy. Nice. 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 Yeah. I've never been there before. Living spaces? Yeah. Living spaces. I mean, it's cool. Like, it's a huge showroom. Yeah. Um, the people there are kind of weird, but I feel like that's anywhere that are like in person sales. I don't know about like, you guys. I, are very... I hate going to a place and having somebody approach me. I'm like, yeah. if I want something, I'll go to you. Yeah, I feel the same way. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. That's funny because, like, at Vitamin Shop, I mean, they're all about like, well, you want the experience. You want them. To, you want to come to so, them. But you gen- want to start them off. Generally, right. I just like I meet them at the door and I'll be like, "Hey, how's it going? Do you need help finding anything?" Yeah. You know, most of the time, no, I'm good. It's like, all right, if you have any questions, just let me know. And, and that's go back that's how job. I like it. Yeah. And generally, they come back and ask you questions. Yeah. But like, I know a lot of other people that'll sit there and be like, "All right, well, we got sales on this. We got this, this, and this." And it's like, no, no I just, I just told you, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Or sometimes like, oh, can you just point me in the direction of your protein? It's like, yeah. So I walk them over there. It's like plant-based proteins here, ways, isolates, boom. If you have any questions, holler at me. We got some sales going on on some of these items. But like, that's them saying like, yeah, point me in the direction of this. But I'm the same way. It's like, don't make me uncomfortable in a store. Yeah, I don't want to feel pressured to buy something. But I know that's kind of, you know, that's corporate. That's the the way they want you. Yeah, that's how they make sales. Yeah. You know, they pressure people. I've always felt like there's, there's good and bad ways to go about it. I mean, everything's a sale. Yeah. Every like every Literally, job that you have, everything is a, like you're trying to sell something. Whether it's yourself, whether it's a product, service, um, yeah. yeah. Um, and people have to trust you. 
and I've always like that's one of the reasons I stopped shopping at like GNC a long time ago. Um, for reasons that like I don't like going into um, like big furniture places because you know or TVs because yeah, they're just trying to push stuff on you, and it's like mm-hmm. you know if if I legit have questions, I will ask you. Yeah. But you talking to me before I can even gather a thought. Yeah, plus it kind of bugs me. I mean, obviously, they're not going to know this about me, but I'm a type of person that will do a lot of my independent research. Absolutely. You know, like, on my own. So I'm going to go in, you know, like, living space before I bought the couch. That was, like, my fourth time being in there. Yeah. It's like I've gone back there. I've seen it, researched it, looked at it, comparable items. So, yeah, when I finally bought it, I literally walked in was like, hey, I want to buy that couch over there. And the lady was like, are you sure? Do you want to sit on it? I was like, I've sat on it before. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I'm the same I've way, I've been here though. a while. Yeah, yeah no, I'm like, I like if I'm gonna, especially if it's a big purchase, like a couch or something, you're like, I've been doing my research. Mm. I'm not going to just buy this on a whim. You're not going to like do some crazy sales pitch where I'm going to suddenly be into it. Yeah. Um, but there's some people who are just, you know, they just, and I've always spend felt like, and I've tried to, what, sorry, but like whether it's like me trying to sell like training or, you know, now supplements, well, you have to ask people questions. I mean, you have to. Yeah. And I hate when people just try to like sell you something without getting to know you. Exactly. They're and, just trying to make this fit. They don't try to find yeah. a fit for you. Like for, for for personal training, it's like, hey, you know, how how often do you work out? Like what's your workout routine been in the past? You know, when you were in your best shape, what did you feel like you were doing on a week to week basis? And people sometimes are like, I don't know, like I felt like, you know, I was doing a lot of cardio, I was doing this. I'm like, okay, so you're comfortable with that. So have you ever lifted like weights before? Like, oh, I've done some classes, done this. And it's like, all right, does lifting weights interest you? And then I just like always ask people, like, is this something that you see yourself doing long term or do you want to get as much information in right off the bat? Yeah. And I've always felt like when you're honest with people and you're upfront, then, you know. Well, people trust you more. and, And you have to allow people to like, like I said, like you have to listen to what people need. Yeah. Like if if you're like oh I'm gonna buy this couch, or I want I want to sell you this couch right here, and it's like oh it's super soft, and it's like I want a soft couch. Yeah. It's like oh but this is the best one we have, it's our top seller, blah blah blah. It's like but you're not listening to me. I I, I want a firm couch. I don't want. Yeah, a soft I hate couch. when people do that. It almost mm-hmm. like turns me off from yeah, the sale. At absolutely. That point. Like I'm like you're not gonna. I don't want it now. It's yeah. Like, cool. I'm I don't want to buy this online somewhere else. Yeah. I feel the same way about like tipping. I don't know about you. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm a pretty good tipper. I yeah. pride myself on being a good tipper. Like, I always give a little bit for people. But I took a lift like uh, a couple weeks ago, and afterwards, you know, on lift usually it, like suggests like one to five dollars or yeah. whatever. Leave a tip. Yeah, give you a percentage. Yeah. This one had two, six, twelve, eighteen. And I was like, who do you think you are? There's no way yeah. I'm giving you like six dollars. Like, yeah. yeah. No. On top of the, on top the of rate. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. if you didn't put anything, I'll give you a dollar or two because I'm like, you did a service for me. I'm also a little Now you're trying to money grub? Like I'm like, the, nah. Yeah. I'm a little indifferent about Guy the lifts. Like, yeah. like, we had a, on Christmas Day in Chicago, we had a really bad lift. Like, the the guy's car smelled like an ashtray. Um, That's the worst, dude. Like, he was just like swerving in and out of lanes, like riding everybody's ass. And like, I mean, it was Christmas Day, so I tipped him. I was like, whatever. But like, then we had another one coming back from the airport in san diego and the guy like flat out asked me like oh do you do you remember if the this fare was surging and i was like i just asked him i was like are you asking me how much you're getting paid for this ride he's like well i was just curious and i was like does it matter all right man like and that just totally turned me off the rest of time i was like just don't and then he proceeded to drive 90 miles an hour on the way home and i was like yeah fuck you man yeah Dude, the, wor- the worst lift experience I ever had was when I went to San Francisco and this lady picked us up. I'll, I'll make this quick because I know we're trying to transition in, but no, you're good. Um, this lady picked us up from, from the airport and she's like, oh, where are you trying to go? Like, oh, our hotel's in Union Square. It's the Handlery Hotel, this and this. Like, yeah. And uh, like we had already set the destination on Lyft. You know, you can always... That yeah. bugs me is when they ask where and, I'm going. And, and, and so this lady took us and she took us to where they where they were building the um 49ers new stadium at the time and i was like why the fuck are you taking me here basically yeah and i'm like you're taking us on a huge detour first of all and then she's like oh uh for some reason the thing's giving me a wrong direction she started driving us back to the airport i'm like why are you taking me back to the airport you've already spent this much time and then she's cutting off 
all these cars on the freeway and i'm like no you gotta stay on this road right here yeah. i'm like gpsing it on my phone because i'm like being like the co-pilot I'm, I'm like i'm like you obviously you clearly have no idea where the fuck you're going yeah so i'm gonna make sure that i i'm gonna get us there you know and yeah. you're just gonna yeah, drive you're just gonna she drive. literally she literally cut off this car the guy swerves around and he like flicks her off as he's driving by and she's like you know, like if you think you're gonna miss an exit, you slow down. Yeah. She like speeds up even though there's another car there. I'm like, you almost got into like three car crashes on the drive there. Dude, and I, yeah. That's what like, I hate when I get a bad driver. It's only been a few times, but that I'm was like, that was my worst experience for sure. That's ter- yeah. It, there was some other stuff Plus too. It's like, it dude, like, you trying to take advantage of me? Like go yeah. around the loop and yeah. Like, well, I ended up I ended up it. complaining to Lyft and my drive was my ride was free but yeah nice still they're pretty good about that yeah stuff. they're they're pretty good yeah but uh, still I mean it was like kind of like yeah like dude you seriously spent it took it probably you took so much extra time yeah it probably so would have taken us twenty minutes to get from the airport to there I'm guessing I can't remember specifically but it took almost an hour <laughs> that's ridiculous <laughs> that's ridiculous anyways alrighty MC let's lead us in. I was trying to come up with a DJ name. I don't think I have a good DJ name. You don't. What, like one of the things I, I DJ mean, Dila. I mean, hey, we got yeah. one more week till the bachelor party, though. I wouldn't mind bringing that up just for you know a little teaser for next week. Teaser for next Dude, week. It's gonna be a blast. We're gonna have so much fun. So much fun. So we got TPC, a PGA golf course that we're going to on the Friday. Boys come in Friday night. We'll do some. Go to like that Millennium Falcon bar. There you go. Saturday, the rest of the crew comes in. We've got dinner. We got a show. We got something else. Then next day we got we got football. <laughs> <laughs> we got another round of top golf. It's gonna Maybe, be a good time, man. I might I, dude, I'm not about I don't know about you guys, but if we have time for something, I would want to go axe axe throwing. Yeah, it'd be fun. I think that cool. would be sick. I'd be down. I, I see everybody do it, and it looks a lot of, like a lot of fun. Yeah, I'd be down. There's a place local in yeah, North Park. It, I think there's one in PB, too, isn't there? Or? Yeah. There is. I want to try it. That'd be fun. I feel like I could sling it. Sling an axe. Yeah. I feel like I'd try the, really the hard. The key is to not like fl- rotate it too much, I think, right? That's what they say, yeah. But I feel like I'd over-rotate it. No, I'm right. not sure, man. I'd have to get a feel for it. I, th- I think you barely get it to flick, and then it'll do it. I want to tomahawk somebody. But if you can get it to flip like mul- multiple men. times, that would be a challenge in itself. Like I got like three rotations. Well, that's going to be my goal. That's exactly but, what I want to do. <laughs> but if you could get it to do three, it's going to be coming at such a strong velocity that it's not going to stick, I don't think. Think doesn't, about what you just said. Doesn't yeah. matter, dude. I'm like that. I'm like that Clemson QB. Sunshine. I'm dude, over there sunshine. throwing sunshine. rockets, man. Dude. Dude, that kid was so let's good. Go, let's bring that up first, just to yeah, just was, start off the podcast. I didn't even put that on show notes. But Alabama got destroyed. I'm shocked. I did not see that coming at all. I don't think anybody I've been did. saying Clemson is good enough to beat Alabama. I've, yeah. I've been saying that. But uh-huh. to put up the amount of points that they, they, they did and to shut down Alabama's offense, dude. Unreal. They said that was the most points a Nick Ta- Nick Saban team has ever lost by. This is the last time he lost by more than ten points when he coached for the Dolphins. That's ridiculous, dude. Like, I mean, and to me, like that needed to happen in college football. Yeah, it like, did. In did. most college and in, in championship games, you don't want to see a blowout. But to but, see Alabama lose the way that they did, that that needed to happen for college football. Do you think it's going to affect their recruiting class? No, I think it's going to affect the way that teams look at. SEC mm-hmm. in general when it comes to, I mean if you look at the the college football playoff we have yet to see I mean since the first one when Oregon was there we've yet to see another Pac-12 team in the top 4 and there's some good football being played there man I mean you know yeah. obviously USC took a huge step back this year but there's teams coming up now like Arizona State Arizona um USC UCLA like there's there's been some good football at these schools and the records never show it because the the division in the conferences, I'm sorry, they finish a little bit tighter. Um, but it's definitely going to give some teams a second look. Like Ohio State should have been in the top four this year. Yeah. And they should have been rated over Georgia. Um, but I don't think anybody 
could play with Clemson or Alabama this year, and I just don't think anybody could play with Clemson. Do you, Do you think they lost because it was more of like a, where Alabama they had like a they got lulled into like a sense of complacency? No, I because just I think just that don't Clemson think they was were better. Ready. Yeah, I just don't think they were ready for like the physicality that that defensive line brought. That's or, what I'm saying. And like, like even those even those, that strong safety number nineteen. Yep, they got a huge game. I don't know his name, but he had a huge but, game. But then, why weren't they ready? That's clearly mental. I think, well, I think you look at the schedule that they played because we mentioned it a couple times. They played we a couple no did name bring people. That up, yeah, yeah. Dude, you know, the, like Alabama that's not challenging yourself. So, in reality, maybe I, I'm not going to take away from how good Alabama was because I think that they are, yeah, like we no, said, man. like or a top. Or no. You know, like a, like the top two team. It's between Clemson and Alabama, but at the same time, I don't think they like battle tested themselves mm-hmm. as heavily as other teams have. Definitely, and I think that kind of showed. Um, in that final game. And Trevor Lawrence is going to That's be his name. a stud. That kid is the truth, man. That dude. like, And I've been, I said it, dude, go back to you our did. podcast. And I said at the beginning of the year, Trevor Lawrence is going to be a star. Yeah. And, I mean, that dude showed, I mean, fr- true freshman, national champion in his first year. And he's, he's only going to get better. Dude, he's smart, too. I don't know if you guys really, like, watched a lot of, the, like, I, I did. Sure I watched, would, yeah. yeah, and like you saw him going, throwing deep fades up the sideline, looking, you know, looking defenders off, coming back to it, knowing that the receiver is going to be there. I mean, obviously that's a lot of scheme, but yeah. at the same time, to have that skill set and that like absolutely football smart to know where to look and taking nothing away from Tua because Tua also won a championship in his. I think it was, he was a redshirt freshman last year, so yeah. his second year with Alabama. Um, you know, he played phenomenally, you know, the last year. And yeah. like I said, he, he's a phenomenal quarterback as well. He's, you know, could could potentially be a, you know, a first, maybe second round pick in the NFL. Um, he's a little bit smaller, but we're seeing that's not as. It's not a bad thing. Not not necessarily you know, a bad thing anymore. Um, Russell Wilson, Baker Mayfield. Yeah, but, but Trevor Lawrence, man, he's got everything and he's got the brain. Yeah. And, that's yeah. the rare thing. And I think that he's that's. He's 19 yeah. and he has like that football smart. Yeah. And he's not one of these like. Cocky, said he hasn't like, lost a game since his freshman year of high school or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah Dude, crazy. That. Like, but I mean, like, you know what I mean? He's not one of those cocky like football players. that's no. like, oh, I know I'm good. I'm not gonna practice. But you hear in his interviews, like, he's a super religious kid. Yeah, very football sound. Like, his parents are very disciplined. I don't know. It'll be fun to see how how well he plays in the future. Absolutely. Hopefully, they just protect him though. Absolutely, that's, man. He's got to be there for two more years. Yeah. But um. I want to get into this new game that I want to bring up with you guys. So the Hall of Fame inductee list for the 2019 class was released. And I don't know the exact rules because I don't know Hall of Fame that well. But I think five get in. Is that right? That's correct. So five get in. We have the list. I sent it to both of you. So what I want to do is pick. We pick our five players, right? And at the end of the year when it gets inducted on the day before the Super Bowl. However many we got wrong, that's how many shots we do. Yikes. So, like, we pick five. So, if worst no, case, if none worst of them case got you're in, getting you five, do, you do you're five, shots. five shots. Yeah. So. But yeah. I think the draft class is pretty easy. Um, so, for the I most don't part. think that's, yeah. Yeah. Which I think, to me, I think that's flawed to just set a, a, a set number to only induct five into. But that's yeah. a debate for another day. But, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I'll give you guys the list here, and then we'll go through who you guys have. So we have uh, Steve Atwater, safety, Champ Bailey, corner, Tony Baselli, offensive lineman, Isaac Bruce, wide receiver, Don Coriel. I don't know what he played. I just know he was an ex-Chargers head coach. Coach, yeah. Yeah. Um, Alan Feneca. Don Coriel? Line. I know he was the Chargers coach, but I don't know what position oh, he played. Man. Dude, our dads are, like, heartbroken right now. <laughs> He what? was a coach. I know he's a coach. The Eric Coriel days with Dan Fouts. Yeah, but he's, no, he, I'm saying he's what getting position? inducted as a coach, though. Is the yeah. thing. So he wasn't an NFL player? Nah, I know he's well, getting inducted as well, a coach, he, but he I... He might have been. Well, well, no, I'm just saying he's being inducted as a coach. Okay. Well, yeah. So as a head coach, uh, Tom Flores, he was a QB and head coach. I don't know what she's getting inducted as. Tony Gonzalez, tight end. Steve Hutchinson, offensive lineman. Edron James, running back, Ty Law, uh, cornerback, John Lynch. I, I call it a safety outside linebacker. Uh, Kevin Mawai, O-lineman, Ed Reed, safety, Richard Seymour, defensive end. So 
I think that's like I don't know, twelve or fourteen people, fifteen people that I gave you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Break it down. Give us me. Give me your five that you think are going to go in. All right. You want to go first, right? Sure. All right. Let's do um. This. Obviously, I'm going to go with Tony Gonzalez. Yeah. The, I, I mean, think he's. The, I think he's. Con- a sh- he's a consensus yeah. pick. I think he, everyone's going to pit him. In. Yeah. Um. My boy Ed Reed. Hands down. I mean, you're talking about one of the most fearless safeties in the history of the NFL. Yeah. Um. Two Super Bowl champions with the Baltimore Ravens. Um. I think that alone gets him in there. Um. Oh man. This is tough. Champ Bailey. Champ Bailey, another shutdown corner. Played for the Redskins. Um, I think he played for the Broncos, Broncos as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he played for the Broncos longer than the Redskins, didn't he? He finished yeah. out with the Broncos. I know that. And then, like just, yeah. I mean, I know that there's an offensive lineman in here that probably should. But, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> just trying to give O-line some love. I'll go. I'll go with. Uh, I'm gonna go with Tony Baselli. Apparently, he's been waiting a long time. <laughs> All right, the yeah. hall's been waiting. Hey, that's like, a good strategy. Yeah, though. I feel like he's been waiting a you long know, time. You know, you gotta get these guys that have had multiple. Uh, well, because that's four for me. Because the next yeah. one's either gonna be between Edron James and Ty Law, and I just think I don't think that Edron James is getting in. This is his third time. I don't think he's getting in, man. Ever? Not right or now. Like, or I like think, in a while. He's I don't think he's like gonna an take a long something. time. I mean, I get it. The dude like. He's good. Yeah. He ain't great. No, but... I mean, yeah, he's good. He, has a good. he had a good, long career, so I'm going to say Ty Law. All right. Anybody in that Patriots, dude, I mean, they got Super Bowl rings. Like, Ty Law had that very, like, famous interception for a touchdown. Yep. For me, so what I... I have, like, a... For me, I have, like, a criteria what I would consider a Hall of Famer. So, You're writing these down, right? Yeah. Okay, just making sure. Uh, for me... I think of a Hall of Famer as somebody who impacted the sport, mm-hmm. any combination of these things too. Uh, someone who was a top 10 player at their position for a, an extended period of time. And uh, someone who obviously you consider um, one of the best in their position. So, um, okay. So you take, kind of put in a humanitarian aspect into it as well with like how impactful they were to the sport. You could do that as well. Okay. Um, like, right, so who like for for me, I mean, like, just coming from a Padres fan, like Tony Gwynn is my prototypical like guy. You so know, unrealistic expectations. Yeah, Got it. I, yeah. But <laughs> but like, I don't think there's. I would also like I also want to but... factor in you know team player, somebody who can win. So okay. I think that's certainly something that that could be valued as well. Um, so I I assembled the list very similar to Ryan's actually, um, which I think the first two are pretty much a slam dunk, and actually did. A little bit of research as to like how great these guys are. Um, right, Tony Gonzalez blows just about everybody. Like based on my criteria, he blows everybody on this list he, away. He was like he was the first player that I remember them talking about as he was playing. Them saying he's a Hall of Famer. He okay. This is a crazy stat. Fourteen time Pro Bowler. There's guys Who's that. Tony Gonzalez. Tony Gonzalez. Oh, dude. I mean, come on. That's, yeah. yeah. Four, he was shoe in. 14-time Pro Bowler, six-time All-Pro, five-time he was top 10 in receptions as a tight end. That's like, crazy. Like yeah. over wide receivers. Uh, and he's 18th in NFL history in touchdowns. Just right. like, boom. Yeah. Those are just... Those are just like raw numbers. Great, yeah. great numbers. Uh, Ed Reed, five-time All-Pro, nine-time Pro Bowler, seventh all-time in career picks. That's fucking That's crazy. Phenomenal. This is being a and, ball hawk. And uh, I mean, you also want to factor in the postseason success. Five straight postseason appearances, including Super Bowl forty six champions. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's great. Those two, I'll be shocked if either of those guys don't get in. From here, I think it's kind of a crapshoot. Okay. Um, I did put uh, Champ Bailey. He's a twelve time Pro Bowler, uh, three time All Pro. Uh, four seasons, he was top 10 pass defenses, and, I mean, 15 years in the league. Yeah. So he's got the longevity. He's got the success. Um, he never did win a, a Super Bowl, but you never know. I yeah. mean, you can't, you can't all. It's you a can't team, knock it's a team sport. Yeah. Um, another one I picked was uh, Richard Seymour. Um, I know <laughs> I know this is good. He's there. good. Yeah. Seven-time Pro Bowler, three-time All-Pro, three-time Super Bowl champion. It's just hard to pick um, a Raider. Yeah. Well, I mean, pa- Patriots where <laughs> he got all, all of that success, but yeah. uh, I mean, I, I get it. I 
he's he's going to be a Hall of Famer, too. I mean, uh, like Edron James, eventually they'll be Hall of Famers. He, uh, I mean, statistically, he didn't blow you away on paper, but there's something to be said about, you know, a guy who's, like, every team that he goes around basically is successful. Yeah. Um, and then from there, I kind of had, you know, I didn't, I, I feel like I, I do kind of want to give Don Coriel some love just because, you know, I had Charger roots. But I did a little bit of research, not necessarily, you know, he's kind of, he's definitely made an impact on the sport. I think him airing out the ball, the Air Coriel days, yeah. definitely deserves some love. But I think you just, you can't put him in. Um, and there's a ton of uh, running backs or uh, wide receiver or uh, linemen, sorry, on this list. Kind of like every other uh, position. <laughs> I was like when your mom's like, hey, you, no, you, uh, what's your name again? <laughs> like, name's the dog. There's, there's so many guys on here. And one of the guys that actually didn't even make the finalists I wanted to put as one of my guys, which was Zach Thomas. He has some just stud numbers. Well, I mean, uh, like, you're going to have to take a shot for that one. I know. I'm basically just signing up for the shot. But I'm going to just, like, lay this out here because right. I did a little bit of research on all these other guys. And I really felt like he kind of got just snubbed on being a finalist. So I'm just going to throw him out there, even though it basically guarantees I'm taking a shot. Uh, but he's five-time All-Pro, seven-time Pro Bowler, top 10 in tackles for 10 years. And, uh, yeah, led, it led the defense to, or the team to uh, five straight po- postseason appearances. All right. Guys, just, I mean, he's, I feel like he's a stud, but uh, apparently nobody yeah. else agrees with me or... I also remember in Madden, that guy had the highest rating in Madden at the time. He was like a 98 overall. Back in the day, it was like 97, 98 or something like that. Yeah. That was like one of my first football video games. All right, yeah. I mean, it's funny, though, because it's like we all are going to have these three people on our list, so it's like <laughs> either we're all screwed or we're all living pretty. So yeah, like the um, three. Or, and yeah, but so the three that I had that you guys already picked were Tony Gonzalez, for obvious reasons, Ed Reed, Again, obvious reasons. Champ Bailey, I mean, again, obvious reasons. I think, you know, Champ Bailey is probably one of the best bump and run corners yeah, absolutely. in oh, yeah, the yeah, game. Same. You know what I mean? Um, and then I, you know, I stuck with defense just because I love DBs and stuff like that. I went Ty Law. Um, you know, he had, Ryan, like you mentioned, that huge pick in the AFC title game with the Patriots. Yeah, that's what it was. Um, you know. That kind of put the Patriots to the Super Bowl, so that's showing up in big moments. I think that's a huge Hall of Fame quality. And then my last pick was John Lynch. I think John Lynch was just like a hybrid of a human being. Like he could play strong safety. They bumped him down into I like love outside Lynch, linebacker. Man. I think he was like I don't. He was like the the safety equivalent of Brian Urlacher in my eyes. Just this guy that could like play the line, play the pass, super smart. I mean, obviously, because now he's a GM or whatever. But that's that's why I think those are my picks. So, you know, yeah, I love John Lynch. I yeah. mean, I I think for sure we're no none of us are gonna be taking more than three shots. I think that's pretty much a guarantee. Well, Ryan and I are basically the same, except for he went with uh, Tony Baselli, yeah. and I went John Lynch. But so Brandon's getting screwed. No, I'm just kidding. Hey, 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 <laughs> easy there. <laughs> But yeah, like we said, that list comes out uh, the day before Super Bowl, so February second, second. So it is. the real question is: Are we t- doing the shots on air, or are we doing it before? Of or we do, on air. Or are we going to record a, it a, on? Or are we going to record it and post it on our Instagram? Well, we got to do the release on the podcast. We'll do both. Simulcast. Simulcast live stream. Live stream it. That's right. We'll lead the we'll lead the podcast off of that. <laughs> Well, let's get into real football. We had the wild card weekend. You know, huge games. Colts, Texans, Cowboys, Seahawks, Chargers, Ravens, Eagles, Bears, all of them. Incredible. It made football so exciting this week. Um, Let's just start off with the first game of the weekend, Colts, Texans. I mean, the Colts just looked like the better team out there. They dominated them. Bill O'Brien, man, you know, he's 1-3 in the playoffs. Like, Ryan, I know you want to bring this up, so I'll just let you take it. Just... I mean, to me, this this game is 100% Bill O'Brien's fault. Yes. Um, the Colts got out to a fast start, and they slowed for the majority of – for all of the second half. Um, they didn't score in the second yeah. half. Yeah. And, I mean, they even started dwindling off in the second quarter a little bit. So, 
to me, it took them too long to put the ball in Deshaun Watson's to allow him to make plays. The Texans defense made adjustments, and they did a really good job of coming back in and figuring out how to slow down the Colts' offense. Yeah, I mean, when you're up 21 to nothing, it's obviously, you know, it's easier to, you know, just play the time of possession, run the ball, be okay with punts. It's a different game when you're up by three touchdowns. Yeah. But to me, it just, it seemed way too long in the game to allow him to, you know, give Deshaun Watson or maybe for Deshaun Watson to just take control of the game. Um, you got to put the hand, the ball in the hands of your playmakers. Um, I said it last week with Demarius Thomas out, it's going to be a really tough challenge with them doubling up Hopkins and, you know, forcing them to run the ball. But there's some weapons on that team, and I felt like they didn't utilize them very well. I totally agree with you. And, you know, Bill O'Brien, it's I, like – I recently became, you know, following the Texans, and I feel like it's a very common thing with Texans fans. Like, you go through this love and hate relationship with Brill O'Brien because sometimes he, like, sometimes his scheme and his play call is on point, and then other times it's like, what the hell were you doing? Yeah. You know, like, the Texans clinched the playoffs week 17, so that game didn't really matter. But instead of, you know, going into a throttled down game plan, he still has Deshaun Watson running these design QB sneaks. And, you know, putting him in in a position where he could get hurt. And then, Ryan, exactly like you said, in the first three quarters, he didn't put the ball in Deshaun Watson's hand once. It was like sit back, pass. How can you keep the most sacked quarterback in the pocket? Like, you know your offensive line isn't that good. You know that he thrives off moving the ball out of the pocket, making plays with his legs. But instead, you just have him sit back there and try to run an offense. No, it didn't make any sense to me. It, I, it, to me, it seems like they're playing a little scared. Like they had something more to lose than to gain. And in the playoffs, you can't be playing scared. You got to be willing to take out all the stops and act like yeah. there's no tomorrow. And it's like you had your game plan running for you all season. Mm -hmm. You I mean, know to get the ball into Sean Watson's hand. Get him mobile outside of the pocket. Let him make plays with his legs. You have he's a great smart. defense too. You have a great exactly. Your offensive line is terrible. Yeah, the, dude. Like, like I said, the the, I mean, the Colts started fast, and that's exactly they what they needed to do to win this game. I mean, I know you're not going to like hearing this. I just think the Colts are a better football. team. I think they were too. I mean, they at were, the end yeah, of the day in that game think, for sure. No, I just think in general. Just mm. if you look at the pieces that they've added on defense, um, the 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 big rookie, the linebacker, um, Vanderish or, or no, 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 that's uh, the Cowboys. That's Cowboys. Oh, that's Cowboys. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I know what you're talking. I'm about, blanking though. on his name right now. Um, he like leads the NFL in tackles. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, they played well all year. They had challenging uh, your boy uh, on the Chargers for rookie yeah, of the year. Um, yeah, that bummed me out that I can't remember what his name is. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, is Darius Leonard, or is that's that... where it is. Yeah, yeah Darius yeah. Leonard. So, I mean, he's played phenomenally all year. They have one of the best young offensive lines in the game right now. You know, T.Y. Hilton playing well. Dontrell Inman, you know, former Charger, has been playing fantastic all year for them, really showing up as a number two. And then Marlon yeah. Mack. I mean, I just think position to position, they're a better overall team than the Texans. But, I, that, I mean, the better team doesn't always win, and that comes down to coaching. And Frank Wright outcoached Bill O'Brien. And that's just how it went down. I mean, I they got up fast, sure. and then they just took their foot off the gas because they could. Yeah, they did. And the they Texans didn't. didn't make an adjustment, you know, which leads into a couple of our other games, how you see coaches make those adjustments, and it never happened. Yeah. Um, you know, the other big Saturday game for Wild Card Weekend was the uh, Cowboys-Seahawks. Um, Cowboys pull out that win. I think the main difference between this that made the difference in this game is losing um, Stephen, or Stephen House. No. Uh, Sebastian, Janikowski. Sebastian Janikowski. I think that makes a huge difference. You know, he it goes does. for that long kick, hurts his leg or his back, whatever it was. It does. This game got close at the end, but yeah. the Cowboys had it. To me, I mean, like the it, it was. But it's the same thing of like you let off the throttle, you let off the gas too soon. You know, and like you I let mean, the Seahawks get back in it. It's. I mean, to me, it's a it's a time of possession. When you look at how, I mean, obviously. Crazy things have happened in the NFL. We saw it last year with the Saints and the Vikings. You know, yeah. unheard of things happen in football games. But when you get into the playoffs, you have most of the time you have a good defense. Mm. You know, obviously there's situations out there right now, like the Chiefs and the Rams, whose defense have just kind of disappeared this year um, and have had phenomenal offenses. But generally, you know, the, the teams that are left, especially in wild card weekend, have good defenses. 
So you generally want your defense to be on the field for that last drive because you trust them enough to be able to shut them down. Yeah. So I, I feel like it was it was good coaching on the sense of the Cowboys where it's like, you know, you you took the time off the clock that you needed and you didn't allow them another opportunity to beat you. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And you know, we've talked about it many times on the podcast of the new kickoff rules and you know how off onside kicks are, you know, nearly impossible this season. Um and yeah. You know, I mean, it was a hard task before, and it's impossible yeah, now. It's impossible now, and you know, it kind of sucked that they didn't have a kicker there that could do a, a true onside kick. They kind of had to do a pooch kick esque type thing, and mm-hmm. that was like a tall task to ask. But God, if the if the the Cowboys lost that game, they would never hear the end of that. No, game. not at all. Oh no, because they had what was the score? They had like a fifteen point lead or something like that with like three or four minutes left in the game or something yeah, ridiculous and then like that. Just winning by two points. Yeah. So which by the way pissed off some fans for the Vegas line. Oh because yeah. they went for that two point conversion mm-hmm. and converted it. A lot of people lost some money. Oh no, I know. <laughs> like two and a half I think the line was, but Yeah, and then uh Sunday started off with the Chargers Ravens game. I know Ryan you kinda wanna go deep into this. Um just you know my key points beforehand of the game uh, we talked about what the Chargers need to do to win that game, and it was make the most out of their possessions, don't kick field goals, score touchdowns, and you know win the time of possession game. And they did exactly that. They had the ball. The they majority. did kick field goals. I mean, they did. But I think the the difference is is that they yeah. made you know all but one that got blocked. Yeah. And Chargers passed. I mean, when they're settling for field goals, generally they're not making they, them. They, yeah. So yeah, that kid is a the yeah, truth, good. man. He's good, yeah, man. He, he seems yeah, like he's good. I mean, I'm still not willing to you know jump on the yeah. bandwagon yet because I'm you know it's still a, a little jaded Chargers cent- yeah. Fan, yeah. Um, but Brandon, you can go ahead and put in yours before because I know I'm probably going to have a lot to say. Well, <laughs> I, I had a little bit more to say. Okay, I, we'll go around, but I think the Chargers D line definitely shocked the Ravens. Um, you know, Lamar Jackson was flustered. He couldn't step up in the pocket. They kept running. They ran way too much read option. I thought that was ridiculous. Then the Chargers' offense was rolling, and I thought, you know, yeah, that was really important. And uh, you know, I have a little scenario, but I want to hear what Brandy has to say first, and then I'll ask you, like, cool, perfect, what they should have done. Yeah, Chargers are. I mean, honestly, I'm shocked. I didn't think they were going to win that game. I would have. No I would have. Yeah, I would have bet against it was them. A matchup for sure. I wanted. Yeah, yeah. that that it, you were 100 percent right too, because I felt like the Chargers came out with a chip on their shoulder and came out and took it to him early in the game. Well, I think and, it helped that they played him like a couple weeks ago. Well, and that, you know. Well, that's what we're yeah, saying. Yeah, that's what he yeah, was saying. And absolutely. Yeah. I mean, no, I like, know, yeah, then, if you watch the game, I mean, the Chargers lost it. I mean, they too many penalties on, you know, putting themselves in third and 15, third and 20 yeah. after they had picked up a first down. I mean, there was tape on there to to help them, you know. But the Ravens are a good football team. Defense, man, I always think defense wins. And I still think that that Ravens defense is the scariest defense in the NFL. I mean, they're yeah. outside they're of the not. Bears, in my opinion. But I would even say, like, I mean, I'd go Bears, with... Ravens, and that's, and then everybody else kind of yeah. falls at the wayside there. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. But yeah, the Ravens defense, even though the offense was taken out of that game, they still gave them a chance. And you know, usually the Chargers. I don't know, this season you look at them and they go, you know, Keenan Allen on a five, seven yard in, they get like a Gates little flare route to convert. They do, you know, Mike Williams or Trevor Williams up the side for like a big game. But this game, they didn't have those pieces there. They kind of had to scheme a little bit differently, just in my opinion. Absolutely. But Ryan, our resident Chargers fan, give us, give it to us. Um, I mean, the the big takeaway here is if you go back and look at the 2008 Miami Dolphins, the year that they had put in the Wildcat to sort of dominate their division and end up in the playoffs, you look what happened to them when they had to play a team for a second time. Um, There's a reason that the read option dies in the NFL, and that's because it is easy to defend a second time. The same reason that you don't run a reverse on a kickoff you know, two times in a row. Same reason that you don't run two double reverse option passes. You know, just don't run the same play twice. Yeah, it's it's for tricks. It's for, you know, it's to throw people off. And the Chargers had two weeks to game plan for the Ravens, and they did it perfectly. I mean, I give so much credit to 
um, Gus Bradley for going out there. I mean, if you watch the game, they lined up Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram all over the field. Derwin James, Jaleel Adai, and yeah. um, Adrian it, Phillips played linebacker for most of the game. Seven DBs, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, for 99% of the game. They had seven DBs out yeah. there. Yeah. I mean, all but one play, they had seven DBs out there. Um, and they basically just handed it to him on the defense side of the ball. Um, it was another game where obviously it got a little stressful down to the wire, but it's the time of possession thing. And the Ravens did not move the ball down the field well. There was one deep play to Michael Crabtree that mm-hmm. you know was a blown coverage on. I think that was the one area that made the game a little closer. Ravens obviously had the blocked punt. Um, didn't get a touchdown out of it, though. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that ended up being... Uh... A field goal. Well, no. Uh, that was the missed first, field goal. Yeah, it was Justin Tucker's first missed field goal yeah. in the playoffs. Um, so it was a windy ass it. day too, man. It was. And then the 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 Ravens did have that blocked field goal against the Chargers as well. That you know kind of made the game look a little bit closer. But the Chargers handed it to him, man. Um, and like you said, they they made the most out of their opportunities. And the reason that I think that the Ravens defense is in fact the best in the NFL is because they do not give up touchdowns in the red zone. Yeah. The Chargers had to settle and settle again for field goals, you know, on five occasions. And, you know, that's okay against a Ravens team that's not moving the ball well. Um, I think the other big thing that you look at this was John Harbaugh, like you would, you had said with the Wildcat, is it took them way too long to put the ball in Lamar Jackson's hands. When you saw it in the fourth quarter, you know, yeah. they, they got rid of the read option. They let him in shotgun. They let him move around and throw the ball. The dude made plays. Um the Ravens have a bright future. Lamar Jackson has a very bright future. He's going to be a good quarterback in this league. Um, you know, a couple wide receivers in there to help yeah. move the ball down the field. Yeah, so that, you know, the one other thing I want to bring up about that game before I ask you guys this question is, um, you know, all these people on ESPN and stuff, they're like, oh, well, the Chargers put the blueprint out to how to beat the Ravens. Not every team can do that. Not every team can put seven DBs out on the field. Chargers defense is very underrated, and not every team can move a uh, you know an outside linebacker D end like Bosa and Ingram into defensive tackle. And then the reason that they can do it is because Melvin Ingram and Joey Bosa are smart football players. Yeah, and they're good. They're, they're good. <laughs> not to mention they're talented, but they're smart. They know exactly what they're you know they don't get caught in the moment where they're rushing the quarterback. You know if you watch yeah. that game. They play very much of like a washboard. Yes, it is straightforward. My they don't guy, leave holes. Yeah, they don't my job is to up. watch Lamar Jackson. Yeah, and then that forced Lamar Jackson to fumble the ball a couple of times. And it know? also forced the him most to important like, time of the game. He wasn't too. able to step up into his throws. He and was all, throwing you know, off of one foot a lot. Yeah, and, they had you know. seven sacks in that game, so they were able to get after him. Yeah. Um, it causes mismatches. I mean, you saw that their offensive line pretty much handle our defensive line the last game, and that didn't happen this time around because they just. They never showed the same front during the game. Exactly. Um, and th- I mean, that's just that's pure coaching. Um, yeah. They they did a phenomenal job with this. Another, you know, Derwin James been playing phenomenal all year. People are like, oh, he had a quiet game, and I was like, again, this dude was the biggest piece in that because it was either him and Joey Bosa or him and Melvin Ingram spying the running back, spying the quarterback. Yeah. If you take those two out of the the situation, you can't run a play. Yeah. So so you know, seeing how much. Uh, the Ravens struggled to move the ball on offense. They stuck with Lamar Jackson. Do you think that if they put Flacco in there, it would have been a good move? Do you think it would have changed anything? Like, I think that if they would have put Joe Flacco in that game, they don't score those two touchdowns at the end because of how fast the Chargers were getting after Lamar Jackson. So Lamar Jackson made a huge play there late in the fourth quarter when he scrambled around the pocket and was able to find the tight end right above Derwin James. Yeah. Um, Joe Flacco doesn't make that play. Um, and it's not nothing against Joe Flacco. He just doesn't move like Lamar Jackson does. Yeah. Um, to me, in this situation, you know, you got there because of Lamar Jackson. Um, I said at the beginning of the game, if they started Joe Flacco, I was scared for my life because that's a that's different a, game plan. That's what I thought they should have did. Um, yeah, I, I, we, but again, I mean, from a, from, when we talked about it with Chad, they weren't ever going to start Joe Flacco for that game. Yeah, for sure. Lamar Jackson's their future. And they were never going to bring Joe Flacco into this game because of that. I mean, they they put their faith and they put their offense. And that, that team... He earned it, though. Yeah. He, he definitely earned it. And that team plays for Lamar Jackson now. Um, so, no, I, I don't think that that game gets as close as it does if Joe Flacco's playing there. I mean, that's, that's my opinion. Um, I just don't think that he can make those plays... 
down, you know, the, the moving around in the pocket like Lamar Jackson had to do to extend plays. Yeah. I mean, I personally, I think I can't go out on a limb and say that for sure putting him in there would guarantee them a win. But knowing the outcome now and thinking back, you're like, what would you think if like the, wouldn't you want to make the Chargers react by switching the game plan halfway through the game after you're getting your butt whooped by the yeah I just my don't think at that is, point it would have it would have changed the outcome of the game and I my mean, only thing is like you look at the pocket that Lamar Jackson had to deal with you know what I mean there. he was throwing the ball on his tippy toes with an offensive lineman against his chest you know what I mean Joe Flacco isn't he's a set and throw quarterback yeah he he's have a that kind of quarterback that kind of arm strength so I think the only benefit that Joe Flacco gives you is quick slants absolutely that's the only difference yeah, he could have softened up the defense a little bit but again but, they had seven dbs out there the whole time so it's not dudes with it's not a lot of space yeah it's the, and it's dudes with speed I that's, mean, that's they what I mean. Like speed against the speed. Know, uh, the speed on the defense gives you less space. If you have yeah. an outside linebacker there that's a little bit slower, can't react as well. Yeah, you know, like no, absolutely. I mean, if they, the the game plan favored the Chargers, this is the matchup that I wanted. This is the matchup that I felt like they needed to prove themselves with, yeah. going and beating a team that had previously beat them. Um, but well, like I said, the the, the Ravens no scrubs. They they played hard, and that defense is brutal, man. Like they go yeah. in there, fist to the ball every single time. And you know they they had a good good game. They didn't have a bad one. They kept the Chargers to you know field goals in the first half. Yeah, they did everything they could. Um, the final wild card game was the Eagles and the Bears. I mean, the Bears were the heavy favorite in this game. We and all I think we the all Bears. were. It was I, a no brainer. Yeah, mm-hmm. no brainer. But you know the playoff god Nick Foles comes in. <laughs> Dude, fuck that! Like, Come on, do You're better than that. I, dude, it, I I am better than that. I don't <laughs> think that he just comes in and. But I like the dude threw two huge interceptions. It just has something to say though that the team wins in the playoffs when he's there. I don't say that the team doesn't win with Carson Wentz in there. I'm just saying you Nick can't Foles always call it a have coincidence. A great, uh, another great opportunity on another team. I'll say that much. I mean, he's going to have another great opportunity. The dudes play for him very well. But to me, this game, this game. It was not won or lost by a field goal at the end. So who do you think is to blame for the, this Bears loss? The Bears defense. Because if you have the best defense in the NFL, you don't give up a touchdown to go down by two points on the last drive of the game. That's my opinion. If you have the yeah. best defense, you don't give up a fourth down play to a quarterback rolling to his right side and cutting off half the field. I mean, th- to me... It 100% falls on the Bears defense. I mean, I actually, I didn't, this is the part that's crazy. I didn't get to watch this game. I just heard about it. And I'm looking at the box score. I'm like, how did the Bears lose this game? Mitch Trubisky, 303 yards passing and a touchdown, no picks. So they weren't turning the ball over. Yeah. Nick Foles, less passing yards, two touchdowns, two picks. And you look at the score, 16 to 15. How the fuck did they lose this game? I don't know. Uh, just me personally, it's like you said, the defense just defense. did not show yeah. up on the important plays. And and the, they it sounded like they just played a little too safe. Yeah, I mean, like you can't blame the team for giving up 16 points. That's not a huge point margin. But like I said, when it comes to playoff football and you're playing the clock and you're playing time of possession, as a coach, you need to be confident in your defense going into a last drive of the game to say, hey, like you've done all year, shut these dudes down. Yeah. And on fourth down, like I said, they ran a bootleg to the right, threw the ball to Golden Tate. I mean, that that play should have never happened. I mean, yeah, they, I, yeah it was I a agree. it was a fifty fifty throw. And if you're the best defense and coach got all the confidence in the world, you can't give that up. And obviously the the, the blocked field goal that's there. A, at the that's end. what I was gonna say. The field goal at the end, you know, Cody Cody Parkey hits the Goal post for the sixth time this season. The, you know, the a lot of, and the the crossbar. Yeah, too. a lot would of people. That, would that are, be the seventh time you hit the crossbar? I guess. <laughs> I mean, it's talent at that point to yeah. hit both. Yeah. But like you said, initially it was just jaw dropping. Yeah. You know, like I can't believe he hit the post again. And then on the replay, it shows it was blocked. The fingertip got in. But dude, I, honestly, like this is why kickers, like people, people don't like hate kickers. kickers. Because it comes down to this, like, and I guarantee you that this is a kicking drill that he's done a million times. He sits up on the hash and he goes, I'm going to hit the post. 
You know what I mean? Like to narrow in your sights and be able to be that accurate to hit the post is incredibly hard. Yep. So I guarantee you that's what it came down to. It came down to like, one, yes, it was blocked, but two, I guarantee you he's done that drill so many times that in a stressful situation, that's what he was aiming for. Subconsciously, I think he was... I mean, I don't know if I'd be able to go that far. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I'm I'm just saying like when you do something so many times... Right and like you, that just becomes a natural mom, mom, like movement for you. I mean, but also comes a movement to them to aim it right down the center and yeah. But I, I, that's what I'm saying. But I guarantee you, in practice, he's not just kicking it down the center every time. He's trying to hit the post. I'm he's not, trying dude, to like kickers get, have one job, and that's the field goal. Yeah. It's, it's that position. I don't think, I don't, I don't uh, think it, ha- it comes down to like how well they can hit a post. I mean, I no, but I'm saying in practice. I'm sure that that's a drill that he does Usually, religiously. Like I remember Robbie Gold, who was actually a former Bears kicker, he would line up at the end zone and just practice kicking the ball straight up to hit the 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 upright. Yeah. So I get what you're saying, but he was never trying it from like the middle of the field normally. That's not no, a drill but I mean, like you look at uh, like other people d- that do kicking drills and stuff. It's like they, I've never seen a kicker try to hit a crossbar like that though. I, I mean, but I mean, it's like a it's it's a hundred percent a mental position, and you yeah. got to have a strong well, his mental stand. Gone now, and you look at like it's just unfortunate man, as at a, this point. As like, like a, a former Charger fan watching Nate Kading miss those kicks all the time in the postseason, and just being one of the most reliable kickers in the history of this sport uh, yeah. during the regular season, you just know it's a mental position. Yeah, dude, absolutely. But yeah. like I said, I just I don't <laughs> think that it should have come down to a kick. It shouldn't I mean, have. It shouldn't I, have. Like that's you know everybody sits there and they I've heard numerous ESPN analysis go on about how you know oh well these dudes are you know paid to make these kicks and it's like yeah they are but you know how much money you've invested on that defensive side of the ball they're also paid to keep people out of the end zone in the yeah. fourth quarter of a home playoff game yeah that's true you, you shouldn't have to rest it on your your kicker but. Yep. You should want your kicker to come through for you. Well, it gives us a very interesting divisional round. Um, we have the Colts versus the Chiefs, Cowboys, Rams, Chargers facing off against uh, an AFC you know, playoff rival in the Patriots, uh, Eagles and the Saints. Um, you know, from this upcoming weekend, what do you guys see um, going to, forward? To me personally, I look at some some very intriguing matchups as far as you know, defense versus offense, you're going to see that a lot with the Colts and the Chiefs and the Rams and the Cowboys. You know, how do those defenses stack up as far as the time of possession goes? Um, what's the game plan going to be like against a team that's had a week off and a week of rest? Um, and then, you know, you look at an Eagles team that was dominated by the Saints earlier on this year. Um, can they come back and, you know, put up a fight against a Saints team that's been slowing down towards the end of the year? Um there's there's some good matchups there. I mean, obviously, like you know, for me, the Patriots Chargers in Foxborough, it's a tough game to win. Um, on paper, the Chargers look good, but it's Bill Belichick and Tom Brady in the playoffs. I mean, that's an exciting matchup. I mean, it's it is, yeah. I don't think you can write this any better. It's poetic justice, man. It's Philip Rivers coming down the end of his career, and he's getting an opportunity to go up against the guy that's knocked him out of the playoffs. You know, most of the time in his career, it's like um, five times or something. Yeah, like that. You, I mean, I I think it's like three, but. It's, oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's it's been plenty. I mean, in you know the year that they were fourteen and two, I mean that was the big one that everybody remembers. And then the AFC Championship game, um, you know, a couple years after that, the, they've had opportunities against the Patriots. And like I said, I don't. You can't write this stuff. It's it's going to be a good matchup. I, I yeah. personally, I feel like the AFC matchups are so much better than the NFC matchups. Um, of the of the conferences, that's going to have a blowout. Or more likely to have a blowout, I would feel like the NFC is more likely to have a blowout. Yeah, it definitely could. Um, but yeah, the uh, for the, the, for the AFC, I mean, last if I'm not mistaken, last time the Colts were in the playoffs, that was when Andrew Luck had those that 24 point comeback yep. against, against the, the Chiefs. Chiefs man. The, yep. So the Chiefs will never be the Colts in the playoffs, and so that's. I mean that alone is something worth exploring. This is you, the, that could get in their Andy Reid's head because I think he's the their matchup. head coach then too. This is the matchup that the Chiefs never wanted. Yeah. They do not want to play the Colts because now you have to face off against a defense that can slow you down, and you have to play against a quarterback that can control time of possession and Andrew Luck. Yep. Um, you know if you're going up against the Chargers, you know you play them, you know how to play them, um, you've beat them, they've beat you. Um, that's a matchup that you're confident in. Um, but to go in and have to play the Colts, you know, the, the Colts are on fire right now. They're probably, you know, if not the hottest, one of the hottest teams in football right now. And the, 
I think it's time you want to be hot. Too. I think it's yeah. scares this matchup scares the shit out of the Chiefs. Yeah, I agree uh, for sure. And then Chargers Pats. I mean, this is it, man. This is the true test to see if the Chargers have turned the page from their old ways. And I mean, this is the time they got to deliver here. And I think every, all eyes are going to be on them because. If you're not a Pats fan, you pretty much don't like the Pats. So yeah, yeah. I think most fans out there are going to be rooting for the Chargers. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, like we said, there's a lot of interesting games this weekend. I think the Colts and Chiefs game, like we said, is going to be a tough matchup. The Chiefs do not want to play the Colts, and that could be a close game. I think the Rams and the Cowboys game is going to be very close. As much as the Rams have been off to a hot start earlier in the season and like their offense is so high-powered, mm-hmm. You look at their last three games, you know, Jared Goff left this finished the season off as the worst quarterback in NFL. Yeah. It you know, a lot anything could happen in that game. Um and then you know Eagles Saints, that's a game you can't really sleep on just because you saw the Eagles They beat a team they, they did it last year. They yeah. did it last year. This is the that, team that they should have played last year in the NFC championship game. Yeah. And uh, you know, but I don't think the Saints will win that game or will lose that game. I think they're gonna win that one. Yeah. Um yeah. It's but like a, we've said, Chargers pa- Patriots, that's going to be a, a game to watch. You know, it's two offenses that are very, very, I think, very similar. Um, I think if the Patriots can run the ball in that game, they have a better chance than if they don't. Absolutely, um, man. I mean, and it's supposed to be snowing a little bit, so it's mm-hmm. going to come down to time possession. It's going to come down to who doesn't make mistakes. Patriots don't make a lot of mistakes. Yeah, and it'll be interesting because usually the Patriots always have like one stud uh, wide receiver going into the postseason and josh gordon you know he's no out of, he's out of football now I, so i feel like this is the most vulnerable the pats have been in a very long time yeah uh-huh. and that's kind of why they scare the shit out of me too because the patriots in the playoffs are just a scary team general, this is the yeah. best yeah. time to play the patriots i will agree with that yes. i mean they're weaker on the offensive side of the ball their defense you know giving up a lot of points this year they blitz a ton which helps philip rivers um it's going to be interesting to see. Like I said, the weather is going to play a huge point into both of those offenses. If it is snowing, you know, you're not going to see a whole lot of, you know, throws down the field. Um, so when we're in Vegas, it's going to be the, uh, you know, conference championships. Your guys' predictions, what are the games we're going to be watching? Shit, dude, I, you know, I can't do uh, this. I'll go first just because I know. <laughs> uh, for me, I really, I think the Chiefs are going to, they're finally going to jump the hurdle. They're going to win a playoff game this year. Um, I feel like this is their year. and. I will say the Colts make a really compelling argument, and I really wouldn't be shocked if the Colts pull off the win. But, uh, I mean, it's the Chiefs at home, and uh, this is a different different team. I mean, they have a quarterback who can make plays, and they've historically not really had that guy. They've had a game manager, which helps you win regular season games. Um, and then, you know, I'm going to send some positive juju out just because I really, it would be really cool in Vegas if. That was this was going on, yeah. but I'm gonna send. I'm gonna pick the Chargers over the Pats, um, okay. just because I want to send that positive juju out there. Um, and but I mean, this is a tough matchup, certainly. Um, and then I'm gonna go Rams over Cowboys, but I do I can't see that game being pretty close. Um, the Rams are just I don't know, just that that team. I feel like they can run the ball really well, and I th- I really think. Their defense is kind of the product. Their bad defense is the product of their inability to um, keep their defense off the field, or like their offense is keeping their defense on the field because their offense scores so quickly. Yeah. Um, and I think if they can maybe go with a different scheme and start running the ball a little bit more than having Jared Goff drop back and throw for the ball forty, fifty times. Gurley's really been hurt too, right? Yeah, uh, but he, he was the last game. I, but... Those were like I, to me. I felt like those were well. We already clinched it. We're we're gonna rest yeah. our best, you know, offensive weapon for that the playoffs. Be, that could be some of it too. Yeah. Um, but uh, and then I'm taking the Saints. I honestly, I think the, you know, earlier in the year I picked the Rams to go all the way, but I if I'm making a pick now, I think feel like the Saints are gonna get it done. Uh, right. They're gonna go to the Super Bowl. That's Ryan, what what, Ryan, what's our matchup? Um, you know, I as much as I'd love to pick the Colts, I I do see the the Chiefs winning this game. Um. I think that it's going to come down to the fact that they have some playmakers on the defensive side of the ball that can come up big. They obviously have a whole lot of holes in that defense, but you know, making the most of their opportunities on offense is something that they've done all year. 
Um, so just a couple big plays on defense is all they need to to win this game. And I I would I'd be very confident as a Chiefs fan right now. Um, got the you know obviously I would love to see the Chargers in the AFC Championship game. It's a good matchup. Um, if I'm looking at it from a team to team, then I'm picking the Chargers. Um, but obviously you can never sleep on the Patriots. They're yeah. they're just a good football team. They win in the playoffs. Um, but like I said, from personnel, depth, weapons, I just think that the Chargers are a more complete team. So that's your pick. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, you like kind of crypt- cryptically picked them, yeah. but you're like, <laughs> no, I just like I don't want to say that. Yeah, you don't, don't want to jinx it. Um. But on the other side, I'm I'm agreeing with Brandon. I'm not seeing the upsets this week, like kind of like we were seeing last week. Um, as much as I'd love to see, you know, one of these defenses show up, um, you know, the Rams off of a bye, having McVay there, that that's going to be a tough, you know, pill for the the Cowboys, um, especially since their offense isn't moving as fast as they, they'd like. This game, more than any, I think is going to come down to ball control for the Cowboys, um, and then. Obviously, the, the Saints over the Eagles. I mean, that one seems like a pretty easy. Pick. If, I think they're eight point favorites right now. Yeah. If the Rams could get out early, they're going to win that game. I think that's... it's going to be on Jared Goff, hundred yeah. percent. I agree with Dean on that. Like, if Jared Goff can just not turn the ball over, they'll win this game. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm I'm in the same vein as you guys, but again, these matchups could go any way. Yeah. It really could. And that's what happens when you get down to the last eight teams. And it makes it so exciting. So it's well, like, all, you all know, these teams are good. Yeah. All yeah the that's teams the thing are good. about the playoffs. There's and no all such the thing ma- as All easy the matchups matchup. are good. Yeah. This is you a great know what year I mean? All the matchups. matchups are good. You don't have like two offenses going against each other. You have a good offense against a good defense. It's like balanced out. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm with you guys. I think it's going to be, you know, Chiefs, Chargers, and Rams, Saints. I think, I think that's, that's, uh, and that's going to lead for a very exciting championship weekend. Yeah. That'll be an exciting. I mean, exactly. Rams and Saints is the game that everybody wants to see. That's yeah. they've kind of been slated against each other all year. You know, obviously mm-hmm. the Saints had the upper hand the first time around. Um, I just, Rams got the personnel, man. They they got the pieces. I feel like they just. I, don't know. I, I, I the yeah. Saint, the Saints line up better. I mean, I've I've been saying well, they that all mesh year. well together. I'm saying from that individual a, skill point that, that Rams, Rams are, defense is bought. They don't yeah. fight together. They have, you know, arguably the best defensive player on their team, but they don't fight together. And that's the biggest difference when it comes down to winning in the playoffs to me. It's not about one person versus the next. Or Aaron Rodgers would have five championship rings right now. Yeah. It's about how well teams mesh, how well they go out and fight for one another. And that's another reason I like the Chargers this year, is they're they're fighting for one another. Mm-hmm. It's not the same competitive nature that I see with the Chiefs. It's not the same competitive nature that I see with the Rams. Um, it is something I see with the Colts and the Chargers and the Saints. That those are teams that go out there and you know even the Eagles. Yeah, I was just gonna say you the, can the, get Eagles. the Eagles in there. Well, I um, think the main difference between all like the three teams that you named or four with the Eagles that, as opposed to the other four is that those are teams that aren't always in the conversation for the playoffs or aren't the ones that are always being looked at or highly regarded and have been through tough seasons and started off slow and then picked up towards the end of the season. You know, you look at the Colts and the Chargers, they start off very slow, and then they built up through the back half of the year. Mm-hmm. They kind of, you know, got, or like, rallied around each other. So, yeah, you could go you anyway. You know what's crazy is all three of us picked, we all agreed for once. I don't yeah. that never yeah, happens. It's nice. very rare. <laughs> pretty nutty. Yeah. Well, um, we talked about last week a lot of NFL uh, head coaching vacancies. Um, as of now, there's been, I think, five of the eight that are listed. Yes, yes. I sir. only like one. I only like one hiring so far. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Bruce Arians. Yeah. Yep. I was okay. I think we're all in agreement all right. there. I was I mean, I was just gonna throw that out there. I mean, I kind of assumed I know Dean's a huge Bruce Arians fan. Um I think that's the only one I like. Are, yeah. And I and yeah. I it sucks because it's a little tainted by the man that we called Jameis Winston. Um, but that's the only that's one. That's his babysitter, his new babysitter. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> but um, there was some weird stuff going on. There was on. some very bad hires. Well, not only that, but with the Bruce, Bruce Arians thing. Because he technically retired from the Cardinals. Yeah. So I guess the Cardinals held his... Uh, his rights. His, his, yeah, I guess his rights to being like a head coach. Mm-hmm. So Tampa Bay had to send over like uh, two players. 
I don't know who they were. I didn't it's see like, like the names, but they basically had to like, like the John Gruden one. Yeah, they like had to make yeah. a trade for him, kind of. It was and very like, interesting. And like Calvin Johnson, all those trade the like hypothetical trades for Calvin Johnson. Remember, yeah. he was going to go to the Patriots and the Lions. He's still under contract for the yeah, Lions, yeah. even though he's not well, playing the, for the, him anymore. The um, Marshawn Lynch thing too. Oh yeah, yeah very I mean, yeah. But luckily, the Seahawks were just like go. I mean, yeah. But yeah, I mean, you see it sometimes. It doesn't happen often, but yeah, that was the only yeah. one that I liked. The rest of them. Or just, well, the other ones were weird. You know, the Browns name, uh, what's it, is it Freddie Kitchen? Is that his name? Yeah, Freddie yeah, Kitchen. Freddie yeah. Kitchens, which I thought was weird. Um, but you, you know, gotta why... have a kitchen in your house. <laughs> he, I mean, but the I, dude I, played... well, they had him, and he was the offensive coordinator. It's like you had Greg Williams there as your interim the whole time. Why don't you just make him, the team's winning under him. You know what I mean? I really like, wish Bruce would But he was only the, the coordinator for like two months out of the year. That's what I mean. He Only until, well, until that whole drama went down with uh, Hugh, Hugh, Hugh Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. Well, it's after like Hugh, Hugh Jackson, Jackson left, left, then he was the coordinator. That's what I'm saying. Um, like, it wasn't like he was there all season, so it... I don't like this hire. I don't like it either. I I mean, mean, well, it's really more of a promotion. I don't like the promotion. I don't... I don't... I don't, I don't understand why you wouldn't just let Greg Williams continue to run the team. He did, a, he did a great job. He did yeah, a great did job. A great I understand job. that he had the whole bounty gate with the Saints and stuff mm-hmm. like that, so he has kind of has a bad name to him, but at the same time, like, there so was nothing wrong with so like, I mean, fix it. Yeah. Like, the, uh, I just, I mean, I get it. He helped Baker Mayfield play well this year, but the Browns have one of the best up-and-coming rosters in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Normally, to stack the best up-and-coming roster in the NFL, I would want the best upcoming coach. Now you have a guy who kind of had the job fall in his lap. That's that's, that's not a good way to get yeah. it. Yeah. Um, to me, it's a typical Browns move. Yeah. Um, if I'm in the Browns front office, I'm not bringing on anybody who was a part of us losing as many games as we've lost for the last four years. Um, no, and that's why I think Greg Williams was an okay pick because they only had him this season. This was his first season with them. Yeah. So it's like he was he wasn't a part of that culture. He helped change your culture. Yeah. So I don't know, but um do you think he's kind of a a stopgap until they find No, I think the that right he's going to have a fine I, I think I, he's going to yeah. be fine with the Browns. I just yeah. don't well, like Well, I think he's going to do fine because they have an up and coming roster like you're talking yeah. about. I I don't look at him. I think that he controlled the way that this offense ran this year. And he did a really good job with it after Hugh Jackson left. So I won't say that I hate this hire as much as I hate some of the other ones. This would probably fall as my second favorite hire because, because I don't have... Because the rest are so bad. Yeah, because yeah, the rest yeah. are so bad. Um, I don't love it. I Again, I wouldn't have brought on anybody that was a part of us losing so many games. Yeah. Um, well, some of the other hires, you know, the Broncos named Vic uh, Fangino. Fangio. <laughs> Is it Fangio? Fangio, Fangio yeah. Whatever. Same. <laughs> Who cares? Um, the pick... The, I mean, well... These two I really don't like. Packers with Matt LaFleur. Stupid. Mm-hmm. Stupid. And then the Cardinals with Cliff Kingsbury, the I think USC. That's the worst one. Those are the two that's worst. That's the worst one. Those I will are, say, yeah. I mean, the um, who is it? Who I like the it? Adam Gase one. Adam Gase. I don't like Jets. that one at all. I'm okay with that one. I don't. I think that w- that goes in the same conversation for me as the other two. I, I'm okay with that one. I don't hate it as much as the other one. I do I think just the Jets were Adam dumb. Adam Gase did to the, the Dolphins. Dolphins. Dolphins yeah. And the Jets are kind of run a similar scheme to the Dolphins. That's like, the only reason not, why it made sense to me. From a personnel standpoint, this dude shit on everybody in that you know, in that locker room this year. He did not have he's not a players coach. Yeah. He's a front office coach. And I mean, you have a rookie quarterback going to be in his second year in the NFL with Sam Darnold. You don't have the same weapons that you had with the in, Dolphins yeah. as, that you're going to have with the Jets. Um ho- they're hiring a dictator. Hopefully that works for them. The only reason why I like this pick is because it just came in like today that they hired Greg Williams as the defensive coordinator. So that's the only reason why I like it. It's like I thought great. I think Greg Williams is a great coach, and I think he knows how to deal He's with a diff- phenomenal defensive coordinator. And I think he knows how to deal with difficult head coaches. Because he's not afraid to just tell you to your face, like, we're not doing this. And the Jets so, historically like to rely on their defense around the ball. Yeah. But – the Packers hire with Matt LaFleur, I think, is stupid. You take a guy that um, you had know, the 27th best offense in the NFL this year and put him on the same field as Aaron or 
Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Rodgers. I mean, you put you take a guy in Mike McCarthy who won a Super Bowl for you and has a winning uh, record, and Aaron Rodgers wouldn't listen to him. Why do you think a guy that can run like you said? It's because the twenty seven. I can literally offense, tell you exactly what it is. The guy has connections with Sean McVay. That's what it is, and they think that this they is going to ma- magically give them the same. That's what pisses me off about this Cliff Kingsbury guy too, because they keep talking about how he has ties with um, Pat Mahomes and with. Uh, Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray. Yeah. And like he didn't Johnny Manziel. Co- he didn't coach them. He was a part of the team that they were on. Yeah. But I mean he was their mean, coach. I mean But he that was... doesn't mean that he like controlled how they played. No. You know, no. it fell into his lap these He might have players. recruited them and or he might have helped recruit them. He might have helped along the lines. Patrick but, Mahomes played for Texas Tech. If you've ever watched college football, whoever plays quarterback at Texas Tech is gonna throw fifty touchdowns in a year. Yeah. Because they line up five wide, mm-hmm. and they run the ball by throwing the ball short. Um, so I don't. That one drives me nuts. The, I mean, back to the Lafour. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I mean, taking nothing away from the guy. I mean, maybe he is a good coach. Maybe he's a great leader. Um, but again, you hired an offensive coordinator, mediocre at best, when most of your problems are on the defensive side of the ball. And you think that having an offensive mind there like Aaron Rodgers, you would maybe want to have somebody that can counterbalance that with a defensive mind. Yeah. This hire makes no sense to me. No, I don't understand it at all. Who was he with? The Vikings? Is no, he was with in? the Titans. The Titans. Okay. Like, what? Are, I mean, the Titans aren't a bad team, but they are run on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. Plus the whole, like, coaching tree of him being, like, under McVay and all this kind of stuff. You look at... Co- like famous coaching trees. You look at Bel- Belichick or Bill Parcells, like those kind of coaching trees. There are a bunch of nobodies but underneath them. Who did? I mean, well, they do Parcells, greatest coordinators, but exactly. they never do great and, job. And as what do coach. those coaches have though? Championships. Yeah, those coaches yeah, have yeah, championships. True. They've been there. McVay does not have a championship. He's had a really good year. Yeah, he has. He's had a phenomenal year. Coach of the year last year. Mm-hmm. Helped turn that Rams team around. But that's they yeah, got but, their butt kicked by the Falcons last year in the playoffs, and I'm pretty sure that's what everybody remembers. I mean, yeah. The then getting into Kingsbury, I mean, you fire um, Adam Wilkes or whatever, yeah, Wilkes after one year, giving him a rookie quarterback, giving him nothing really. The, the dude had, had nothing. All you had was the hope of David Johnson coming off of an injury, having a season like he did two With years. With no prior. offensive line, yeah. you already got rid of Tyron Matthew. You know, Patrick Peterson said at the beginning of the year that he wanted out of there. He don't want to play here anymore. And the dude goes 3-13, and 13 and you fire him. So now you bring in a guy who has not been a head coach. You know, in any level. In has NFL. <laughs> at any level. Yeah. Any level. He's not even been a collegiate head coach. Yeah. He was USC's offensive coordinator for like seven years. And or this something. is and the a same. failing team. Yeah, that. on a down, on a system, or on a, a team, or a school that's on a downhill trend. This dude also said that he would draft Kyler Murray with the first overall pick in the draft. Which is, before he was a head coach. Yeah. I mean, not saying taking nothing away from Kyler Murray, but he's a five foot eight quarterback who's probably a better shortstop than he is a football player. I agree. And yeah. I mean, like this and this is the dude that you bring on to run your team because apparently they have connections with Sean McVay. I I, I don't understand it. I, I don't get that, it. That it's just a worse signing. I shaking my head, I just have no idea why they'd and I mean, like, yeah, I don't know why they did it. Like, I just don't understand why you, one you jump ship so quickly when like we've lined up that they don't have the best team in general. You know, mm-hmm. they don't have a lot of weapons. And then two, you like you reach for a guy. That's what I felt like. I felt like this was re- literally a reach for a guy. You're l- trying to go into the McVay lottery and come out with a guy that has that same mentality. If you're gonna unload, so it's like looking for a job. Mm-hmm. If you're gonna get an, if you're gonna go to a new job you're gonna have a new one lined up or if you're gonna quit your current job you're gonna go to a new job yeah. you know you gotta have one lined up the dude was 35 and 40 when he was with texas tech that's a losing record yeah at a college level in yeah. a conference where offense dominates i mean so, the, yeah yeah the, the, I, like, it, it, it doesn't make sense to me at all i mean and then the other one that just came out too and it, it, it's not going to be pronounced official until the you know rams are obviously eliminated from the playoffs but the next other hire we had was the Cincinnati Bengals plan to hire the QB coach, Zach Taylor, from the Rams. 
Again, I don't I, and understand. I, I don't understand it. Like Sean McVay, great like, coach. Mike McCarthy is still sitting out there, and he already said he's like, I was going to coach the Jets, the, the or, Jets nobody. or nobody. Yeah. And if I'm the Jets, I'm sitting there like, how did I mess this Why up? Why did we not? Well, I heard he was he wanted the Browns for a little bit. I was hearing well, some I rumbling. I kind of think but... everybody wanted the Browns for a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, but his but this still. dude's highest accolade that he's had as a coach is interim offensive coordinator the dude hasn't run an offense now you're hiring him to run your team you're f- yeah i don't like, get any of these man i get it like nfl you have a bunch of coaches and you have a lot of you know specialty coaches that are doing different things but a head coaching position that you have to take on a lot of responsibility not only are you like either going to take charge of calling plays but then you have to be able to have that level mind like that level head of being able to to steal your ship direct your team towards a winning season yeah being able to talk these guys that are like adults yeah these are professional people that are out there and how is somebody going to come in that has never been here before or ever been anywhere in the playoffs or on a NFL level and then respect yeah. them and listen Some to them? Some of them aren't adults yet, really. Dude, I mean, I mean they're, they're all immature. In, they're, they're all <laughs> under 40. No, I get that. But at the same time, it's like they're, if you're a professional athlete, you've been doing that your whole life. So somebody yeah. that's going to come in and try to tell you how to do your job and tell you how to like, you look at Matt Patricia. That's why he wasn't very well, you know, liked in Detroit for the beginning of the season. Cause he was trying to tell these guys how to like, he, he was trying to change their mindset. He had people Absolutely. out there doing wind sprints. You got egos to manage. Too. Exactly. That's like, another thing. You go out there trying to tell professional athletes to run wind sprints. Like they're like, we're not in high school anymore. Well, I'm not doing like all these teams are jumping on this bandwagon of offense dominating the NFL. And we well, saw it does, it, man, but it <laughs> but didn't in the second half of the year. That's true. Like it, it definitely it died made a out freaking complete 180. And you saw all these yeah. defenses come back and it's like, wait, Plus, I think it's something to say. I just like defensive head coaches. I, I think do. they see it's passion. That, yeah, they're, like to be a defensive player, you have to have passion because you don't get the shine of scoring touchdowns. Well, and even at that, like you look at Anthony Lynn was a running backs coach for the Bills, you know, yeah. and then he came up and he was an offensive coordinator. Um, but he still plays the game from a passionate standpoint. I mean, from a, a running back position, that's where you know you yeah. you put the game in your hands and you run the ball and you continue to you know take out the morale of the other team. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like these people are trying to hire these wizards that are going to come in and just magically flick their fingers and change their organization around. And well, football is a physical it. sport still. You've yeah. seen it's a copycat league. You see what the Rams are doing, you know, and they just trying bring to find McVay that mold. And, yeah. Yeah. They're looking to find that spark. And it's like, Hey, you can't force it. And Hey, yeah. let's look at this. McVay has Todd Gurley, Robert Woods. Oh, that, that team was Cooks. prepped. I yeah. mean, they Aaron have Donald on the other side. They have like, stars on that team. Mm-hmm. You know, Jared Goff played phenomenally the first half of the year. He was up, you know, ar- arguably an MVP candidate. Yeah. Um, great coaching, but he had the players to do it. You you can't put a Cliff Kingsbury on the you the know Rams the Cardinals and expect the same thing. Well, no, I mean, on the Cardinals this year oh, and yeah. expect him to snap his fingers and all these players are going to turn into the next Todd Gurley. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. You got to have the personnel first. And first of all, you have to have leadership. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, th- yeah. you can win a game by coaching, by sheer leadership. You can will your team to victory. You see it every week. Yeah. Teams Maybe not in the back, postseason. But... No, but, but, like, but teams that come back, you know, the Bills go out and beat a team like the Vikings at the beginning of the year. I mean, mm-hmm. it's possible. Yeah, but you don't get those wins if if you just have a methodical coach over there that you know thinks that they're just gonna outsmart the person on the other side of the field. Yeah, and you know, like we're talking about Cliff Kingsbury and how he even came out and said, "I drive Kyler Murray number one overall." Like that should be you know a red flag right there. Mm-hmm. Like you said, uh, better because shortstop. They have the number one overall back. pick this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially because of that. So you know now that he is the cardinals head coach he's said that do you think that kyler murray is going to declare for the draft oh i think he is i think sure. he already did didn't he he didn't declare yet but he is or i know he said that he's going to but i don't know if it's official yet it's official i know he said there's rumors he said that he wants to so do you think he's worth the number one pick no no uh but yeah i didn't think baker mayfield was worth the number one overall pick i go by what the person can bring to the team right away. I You're, think it's team need too. 
Like yeah. we said, they have a rookie. Well, you know, they had a rookie quarterback. I've always so. said, if you're going to put every player on the board from best to worst, you know, if there's a, you know, two players in the top five that you really like, one you need, one you don't, maybe you make that decision to go after the player that you need. Mm-hmm. Other than that, you are drafting best available player. I mean, unless yeah. you get good trade offers. And, that, and, that, and that's the back. other thing. But like, they drafted Josh Rosen. Unless you're going to use Josh Rosen as trade bait to get more first round draft picks, no. Uh uh-uh. uh. I, I see the Cardinals trading back personally. I would yeah, be, I, I would I wouldn't be shocked if that I think happened. Be, yeah, that's the I just don't know if there's going to be a whole lot of teams that are going to be wanting to draft a quarterback first overall this year. There's always somebody who wants to draft a quarterback. But there's look, there's, there's not nothing a lot of this team, year. Yeah, there's one there's nothing in the draft and two there's not a lot of teams that are really like they don't need it in my opinion. I mean I there's quarterbacks that quarterback, need but... I just think that it's going a lot of it's going to happen in free agency. That, that's what I mean. Like, I don't think you have teams... Joe Flacco that could be potentially on the free agency market next year, and I think a team would rather go after Joe Flacco as their quarterback than Kyler Murray. Yeah, there's a lot of good Just players out there, man. I mean, I I think you look at a team like the Broncos. Maybe that's a team that trades up into the top. I was five. thinking. I was thinking Jaguars. Jaguars are the and top. And they're sitting at like six, I think, right now. Like, yeah. I'm not trading up to one if I'm them because you have to give up another first round draft pick. I feel like they have enough pieces that they should be contending right now. But to me, it's mostly about... But do you think that, like, Murray is the difference? No, I don't, but I don't... I think I haven't seen seen the pre-draft boards, but is is Kyler Murray the top-ranked quarterback going to... Uh -uh. I don't think 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 he's in the top five. He shouldn't be. Um, Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. So maybe they go after a different quarterback. Haskins would be one, but again, I don't see him as a number one overall pick. If you look at the draft this year, there's a ton of good defensive tackles, interior defensive linemen, offensive linemen. And if you're a team that's picking in the top five this year, you need some of that. Yeah, you and can, you can't pass up you can a, wait for it. a star defensive player yeah. for a coin flip at a quarterback position. I agree. I agree. And, you know... I think Kyler Murray should just stick with baseball at this point. I think he should play football, but I just I wouldn't draft him first overall. Yeah. Um, I mean, I just say that because I'm like, take all the money where poor, you can get poor it. Poor Oakland him. A's, man. They spent that high pick on him, too, if he, yeah. ends, up, he, if he ends up going to the NFL. Yeah, that, that's a yeah, wasted pick. He was, what, nine? ninth overall? Yeah, yeah. He, was, he was a high pick. He was a high pick. You know, going into baseball um, – Still no news on the Machado Harper front. Um, the Yankees apparently there's rumor that they're out. It's really only down to two teams with uh, the Machado. Is it White Sox and Phillies? Yep, White Sox and Phillies. Ooh, it's really wow. just down to them. They're the only ones that have made an offer to him over three hundred million. And wow, you know, I, this is a new Yankees approach, man. And I think you're seeing a I don't lot hate of it, though. I don't either. You don't buy it? No, I, no, I, don't, I don't hate, hate it. it. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, I wouldn't. If I was a Yankees I don't, fan, I don't I, like Machado. So I mean, I yeah. well, Machado plays a premium position. He's young and he's accomplished. But and like the after, yeah, the douchebag mm. part. I mean, it's hard to it's hard to like a guy like that. Yeah, um, they brought on Troy Tulowitzki and they said he's our shortstop. Basically, and yeah. they have a bunch of cap space, and they're going to be able to make moves. They don't really need to make a move right now. I just I mean, feel bad for all these guys, though, that are underneath the Machado Harper news. You know what I mean? You have Mike Moustakis, who could easily be a big name that's out there on the free agent Padre, market that no for, one's talking for, about. Uh, future Padre, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> I, I honestly would not be surprised if he ends up on the Padres. And then you, know, you have JT Romuto. It's like he's not all a free agent, he's, he's, he's a trade well, bait. Well, trade bait, but I'm just saying, like, I feel like there's going to be more talks about him once. Dallas Keuchel's still out there. Yeah, there's, there's still out there. everybody's still arms. out there. It's Everybody's held up on Machado and Harper, who were supposed to have signed last month. But so where do you think it. Harper goes in? Still the Dodgers? God. I think they're, I mean, I feel like they're the only real, uh, uh, like, option. I could see that being the most likely I'm leaning towards Dodgers, certainly. Um, I don't. I hope not, but I mean, the Dodgers spend money. And they're not afraid to spend it, and they're all in to win it. And they still haven't gotten it done. Not I think. Sure. Har- I think Harper going to the Dodgers depends on if the Phillies can get Machado. Because if they don't, then they're not going to go home empty-handed. You know what I mean? They have the money for it. They're going to get somebody. 
And if they can't get Machado, who's obviously their favorite, then they're going to get Harper. That's just the way I, I think it's going to be. Um, but, you know, like Mike Moustakis, we, you said Padres. Who do you think he's most likely going to go to? I, you're, you heard me, Padres. I, the Padres have already addressed that their biggest need is third base. And Moustakis, I think, has been a little undervalued. Yeah, He signed a one-year deal last year. He's got that Eric Hosmer connection. I don't know. To me, it seems like he's already won a, a World Series. He's obviously had success in his career. Why wouldn't you want to go play for the Padres? And especially yeah. if we can... Yeah, we have cap space this year. We have plenty of it this year. But it's I, I think what it is, we don't want to hamstring us going forward. So if you could sign Moustakis to like a one- or two-year deal... Yeah. I mean, why wouldn't he accept it? Yeah. And then, you know, we had uh, the Mets signing Jed Lowry to a two-year deal. And then the Nationals with Brian Dozier, one-year, $9 million. I Do feel you like think that's kind of a replacement for Harper? I feel like that's them signaling they're like, we're done with Harper. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Kick my microphone. But, yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah. You got to start planning for life ahead, man. And, like, if these dudes are not signing right now, one, I mean, not like Machado is ever going to sign with the Dodgers again. Um but you got to plan for life after, and yeah, the Nationals. I mean, if you sit around and wait, you're going to put your your entire organization in a worse situation than what you started with. I mean, because all these other guys are signing, yeah, and, and you got to make a move before it's too late. Rogers got to move on Dallas Keuchel, though, man. Yeah, you're on. Yeah, he's he's a little older though, but That's fine. if we can get him at a good good rate, and, and we're not like locking him up too I take, long, I take three years. I don't think he'll take three years, but I would like three I, years. I think he's trying to look four or five years. I would, which I would, I'd I settle for him. four, but like ideally three. Yeah. yeah. I feel like his style of pitching will endure pretty well. Yeah, he's not um, it'll, it'll overpowering. Age, yeah. It'll yeah. age well, I feel like. But sometimes you see these sinker ball guys, they start to lose their touch on it, and it starts to hang up in the zone. And then you or got remember, Clayton Richard like, on your hand. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's definitely better than Clayton Richard. <laughs> But I will say, you know, we talked a lot about needing pitchers and somebody to help these young I guys would, out. I would love a start, an ace. Dallas Keiko would be. And I've said that I'm not prioritizing pitching over third base at all. Yeah. Um, but he's still available. He's still available. And, you know, the longer they wait, the price goes down on them, I yeah. feel like. So, well, yeah, could definitely. Sometimes. Right well, now, I mean. I it, feel like right now is the bottom. You got to, you, you have. But you want to go before now they well, I can pretty much or? guarantee you none of these dudes are signing deals until Harper and Machado. I, if I was an agent, I would tell my my player, yeah. I'd be like, "Hey, let's just wait for this to shake out, and then all these other guys who have been holding up all their cash are going to have a bunch of money to spend, and you'll be able to sign with them for a great deal." Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, we're running kind of late, so let's just skip NBA. Um, Ryan, you want to give us our stat of the day? Absolutely. Let's do it. Stat of the day, stat of the day, dabba dooba doo, stat of the day, dad of the day. Here comes that what? Stat of the day. Bop. All right, so this is a NFL stat. All right. Based off this year. So there's two pretty goofy ones. Um, the one of them I chose not to pick because Dean mentioned something about it earlier this year. Um, Chiefs never lost a coin flip. Yeah. So that that was one of the weird ones. But the other one... <laughs> that was a weird one. Like, what do you mean? The playoffs or just... No, they've never yeah. lost a coin flip this year. Ever. Like Ever? This whole, no, this, no, this whole year. season. They, oh, they this season. Yeah. They wow. a coin flip. It's rigged. Um, Which was crazy. I mean. It's a rigged, rigged coin. During the Washington Redskins games... Well, we know what to bet on if, if they're still in the playoffs. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, Washington did not see one lead change the entire season. The Redskins. Wow. Whoever scored first won the game. What? And never. That's just weird. What? Never gave up the lead. It's like odd coincidences. Like yeah. That's what? That's weird. Never. Not once. <laughs> they didn't play good. Like no, they were a good or bad team. There at one point they were five and three. But, oh, and then yeah. they lost their they never, quarterback and then lost another quarterback. None of yeah. their games saw a single lead change. Well, that's kind of like, because I had Adrian Peterson on my fantasy team, and if the Redskins lost, Adrian Peterson was shit. Mm -hmm. So it's like the same thing. It's like they just give up on the run. Dude, that's such they, a weird like mentality, though. You know what I mean? 
to switch. Like if they score first, you're just like. Well, think about it. If you go out there as a defense, you give up a field goal. You're like, all right, cool. They got a field goal. We we held them to a field goal. Our our team can go out and score a touchdown. Yeah. Boom, one lead change. Not yeah, once. Yeah. Not once. Dang, dude, they, that's we. That's they weird. do rely on their defense a lot, and they love to run the ball, and they have nothing but game managers. Well, I think that's all they had this year was. <laughs> but, yeah. Like, all right, well, lost opportunity to throw the ball. So, dude, that's such a weird thing, though. It's it like is a weird it's anomaly like, that, yeah. All Not sixteen one. games. Because then you look at like you know our favorite game of this season was the Chiefs and Rams game. It's like that one had I think the most lead changes in like NFL that, history. Like that was so many points too. God. That's what I mean. It was just like every single. I hated that game so that, much. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. I was joking. All right, I was, being, I was like, dude, I was being facetious. Come on, that's crazy, man. So that's... bad for football. Not fucking arena league. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> weird. All right, well, let's close it out. We're an hour and forty in. Oh shit! I, I knew we it talked. Was running long. We, we talked a lot. Um, everybody, if you stuck with us, thank you for listening. We are the Three Amigos and a podcast. Uh, next weekend, we will have a a nice hurrah. Um, maybe be a little drunk for that one because we're flying out to Vegas. Hell so yeah. we yeah. will see you next week. See you on the flippity flop. See ya.